we're going to take a look at a little look at debugging and kind of just the state of debugging with Node.js. Um, and to give you a little bit of context, um, I work on Google Chrome. I, I work on the Chrome DevTools. But I've been invested in DevTools and just generally tooling for a long time. Um, I, I found this like recently. 10 years ago, I made this stunner right here. A nice little like cheat sheet of keyboard shortcuts for our best friend Firebug. Uh, so good. But you know, like even then I was just really uh, excited to understand what kind of capabilities tools uh, offered us. Because I was always like, I can, I can learn one more thing and I can be more productive, save my time and save my stress. Um, and we now have some good tools. We have one tool in particular that is, you know, our trusty friend. Good old console log. We all use it. We love it. It's reliable. It's everywhere. Uh, you want to know what a value is? Hey, console log's got your back. No problem. So that's great. Um, but you know, while it is useful, like console log debugging, printf debugging, uh, there are more powerful capabilities. So I want to touch on um, a few of those. Uh, a year ago at Google I.O., um, the Chrome, Chrome team uh, introduced some of the work that we'd done to introduce the V8 inspector component into Node, bringing some new debugging capabilities uh, to the Node project. Uh, we actually announced a pull request uh, rather than like you know something shipping, but hey, you know it landed and and now it's now it's in there, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to quickly walk through kind of just the basics of how this works. Uh, you have a little hello world script. You can run it like that, obviously. Uh, but you can run dash dash inspect. How many people have used uh, dash dash inspect or something? Good. Yes. Great. Okay. Do this. Return on the debugger. Also, dash dash inspect will run it, turn on the debugger, and pause it on the very first statement of the script. Uh, I find this is really useful with you know utilities, other things where it's going to happen really fast, and you want to uh, break at the very beginning to make sure any sort of breakpoints are in place. Um, now, when you run this, uh, you'll get some output that looks like this. Hey, the debugger is on. Uh, it's listening to a WebSocket, and um, here's some docs. Uh, this is a little different than it was before in previous Node versions. You saw something like this, a uh, bit more text and a big long uh, URL that you felt compelled to like copy paste and it's kind of awkward. Anyways, don't do that anymore. Uh, it's a little bit better and so this is kind of uh, a good approach to take. So once you've turned things on, uh, head over to Chrome, new tab, type in about inspect. It'll bring you to a page that looks a little like this. Um, and these are some inspectable targets. Uh, you'll see your, the Node script mentioned right here. But click on this guy right here, the dedicated DevTools for Node. And this is going to pop up DevTools that's just for your Node. Uh, now, another approach uh, to, to do the exact same thing is if Chrome's open and a DevTools window's already open, and then you go and you take your script and you start inspecting it. Uh, in DevTools now, um, and this is new as of, uh, it's shipped to Chrome Stable as of this week. Uh, right up in the top left corner, we'll add a nice, bright, green, shiny Node.js icon. Click that guy, uh, and that'll bring up the dedicated window for you. So um, this is just, you know, the dedicated window. Uh, obviously, it has less tabs than your typical Chrome DevTools, because um, we're just dealing with Node and its uh, capabilities. Um, but the dedicated window is great because if you're working with, no, if you're working with uh, your application, then you make some changes, uh, so you're control c your application, and then you rerun it, this dedicated window is going to automatically reconnect to the node that is now there. Um, so it's just there, so it's just going to automatically reconnect whenever there's a new one. All right, so those are just kind of the basics. Um, but I want to show a little bit of how this works uh, in action. So, we have, uh, I have a little web server app, um, and when I run it, yeah, okay, yep. Internal server error, great. So we do have some problems. The console is telling me problems, great. Uh, over in Chrome Inspect, I'm gonna open this guy up. Okay, so this is the app, uh, 40 lines of stuff. Internal server error is right here. And so one thing that I know happens 
Uh, and it's a little, you know, it's, it's kind of confusing. So we're trying to do this, we catch. So we got some exception, and then at this point we emit an error event. Uh, that actually gets heard up here when we're listening up he, uh, on this guy. And then this error function is emitting its own error event, passing along uh, the data. Now, I really want to know what this exception is right here, because I'm not getting it out on the console. Um, but one thing that I can do is I'm going to place a breakpoint. Well, I don't actually want it here. I want to break inside of this arrow function. So I can place it, this guy, but then turn on this column breakpoint right here. So now, all right, now we go over here, we reload, and I paused inside of the arrow function, um, and you can see data is inspectable, um, and so we're paused inside this guy. It's really cool, works phenomenally well with arrow functions, with asynchronous code, um, it's super useful. Now, I, this guy comes down here where I say problem, and I'm losing the details about this exception somewhere between there. Um, I don't know where exactly. I might start out with like a step in, see what happens, but I step in on emit, I'm inside of uh, you know, node's core events module, which honestly, I like. I don't want to walk through this. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to black box this guy. Um, and with black boxing, it's just saying, hey, you probably, you know, uh, you're just going to avoid stepping through this. So we can see now in the call stack, it says that a few call frames are completely black boxed. And so now when I step in, we step directly to my own uh, event handler for the exact same thing. So just bypassing all that. Um, right, well, we got that under control, and E is telling us, uh, well, this string, we still don't have our exception. I'll open up the console, Let's just be like, this arguments, yep, there it is. Okay, there are two arguments, right. Okay, that string and then the actual exception. So I was just being silly. So what we can do, just take this guy, control D for multiple selection, comma, spread, good. And um, I'm going to hit Control S. Uh, Control S is a live edit. It's kind of like a hot module reload, but at the at the V8 level. And so now, uh, when I refresh the same guy, well, I'm still paused. I'm still paused. Hey. Now when I refresh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So I was just getting the logs before, and now. Yes, the actual exception made its way through. Nice thing here is I didn't have to like restart node. The live edit meant that I'm able to just keep that running, make some changes, and then uh, see what happens. All right, so thank you. <laughs> so show just a few things here. Column breakpoints, black boxing, live edit, all this good stuff that's been available when you're debugging Chrome, now all available when you're debugging uh, with node as well. All right, bring it back to these guys. So um, if you've done this before and you feel like it takes a little bit of work just to bring up that window, there are some tools that uh, help with this to make it like a one action thing. Hey, I want to bug window. Uh, there's a Chrome extension called NIM, a project called Spec Process, another one called Rocket. Just makes it kind of a single action uh, to get that up and running. Really what they're doing is opening this URL. Um, we just need the DevTools uh, URL with the WebSocket kind of hooked into it. But because it's a kind of a fancy URL, you can't open it in normal ways. So that's, that's it. It's just kind of the under the covers. All right. I want to briefly touch on four kind of other approaches uh, apart from those basics. One situation you might find yourself in is you ran Node normally, no flags, no anything, but you've reached a state and you're now like, I really want to debug it. Profile, I don't know. You want to start inspecting it. Is it too late? It's not too late. No, no, you can do it. Process, debug process, and pass it just to process ID as a, as a number. You can run this in a completely different uh, node process, and it'll just flip on debugging in your target. 
Really cool. Um, that works. If you want to do debugging and uh, you're more of a terminal kind of person and you want like a GDB style interface, um, you can use the existing CLI debugger. This has been a node for quite some time, but the back end uh, was recently redone to be sitting on the new implementation. Um, but you just work with the script uh, here on the command line with um, some short, short commands. It's pretty great. Now, another approach is via the DevTools protocol. Now, as you saw, there's this WebSocket port, and that just speaks JSON RPC with the uh, DevTools protocol. This right here, what we're looking at, is a script that uh, attaches to Chrome or Chrome headless um, and just captures a JavaScript profile uh, just automatically. Um, if we wanted to take this script and have it run against Node instead, we just change the port uh, to connect to Node's debugging port. Otherwise, the rest of it works. Um, the entire DevTools protocol that Chrome uses is obviously bigger than the set of what Node is using, but there's some great overlap um, around profiling, debugging, console, and the runtime, all this. So you can do this over here over the WebSocket. Uh, another approach is to use the new uh, core inspector module that was added, I think is new in eight. Um, and here you just set up a session and you talk the same, exact same protocol, profiler, enable, start, stop, same thing as we were doing in the last one, but this is happening inside of your node process um, instead. Also a decent option. Uh, with debugging out of the way, I wanted to quickly touch on tracing um, because there's some cool stuff. Now tracing uh, is a very powerful collection of tools. On the Chrome team, we use this to understand what is happening in the browser. This is uh, two seconds of loading a page on Wikipedia, um, and on Chrome, we use this to understand what is happening. Anything that's taking time, uh, we go to a trace. That is the ground truth, um, and so much stuff is instrumented there, and this is like, the most basic looking thing, it can get a lot more involved, but we're gonna skip over that. Um, traces are really, really powerful, and the great thing is now this whole capability is available in Node. It is still early days, but this is how you can do it. Uh, run with trace events enabled, and after you run this, it's gonna spit out a JSON file uh, of the trace, and you can open that up in Chrome in a about colon tracing, just drag it in, and you'll see something like this. Uh, this is one that I captured with uh, Node just the other day. So there's a few things going on here, um, and it gets really interesting in this area in the middle. I'm not gonna zoom in and explore it too much, but I've selected this whole region, and down at the bottom, we see some of the results. Um, we have that we know how much time V8 spent executing, compiling, parsing, doing GC work, uh, total time, self time, and the on CPU time. So some nice breakdown around the timings of what's happening on that thread. Um, and then above it is some really fascinating stuff. And this is actually showing me here kind of a breakdown of where my latencies are between DNS and TCP connection and the rest of the network request. Um, really helps, in this case, identify where the, the certain latencies are. Um, I will point out that this aspect is sitting on top of the new async wrap implementation in Node Core, um, and this part isn't yet in, uh, isn't yet landed in Node. But there's a good-looking pull request, really good stuff um, that, when landed, will enable this. Still, the the kind of detail in here uh, in the trace, um, it's. Uh, there's a lot more opportunity, so I'm really excited to see uh, continued investment in instrumentation and understanding all sorts of things and what's happening inside Node, like understanding when the event loop is doing work or whatever. This uh, is a great solution to uh, instrumenting all that and building tools around it. Yes, good. A basic uh, trace looks like that, but there are some off-by-default categories which give you more detail at the cost of a little overhead. Uh, this would be the magical incantation that turns on all those categories. Um, yeah, there you go. So that's about gonna wrap it up for me. Um, one last thought I wanna leave you with is just explore and think what is beyond the console. Uh, thank you guys very much.